This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Keep yourself and your data safe online with a free account from Dashlane. Mars has been the poster child for future space missions for decades. It makes sense. We've already landed on the moon, and Mercury and Venus are way too dangerous, so Mars is the next logical step. We've heard all sorts of harebrained schemes to get humans to Mars, create colonies, or terraform the red planet, but so far, none of them have come to fruition. That being said, if anyone has the pop science evil genius clout to get it done, it's Elon Musk. Musk has long planned to take humans to Mars on SpaceX rockets and eventually establish permanent human colonies on our rocky neighbor. But recently, he's refloated a more dramatic approach to making Mars feel more like home. Just nuke it. As absurd as this sounds, there is some scientific structure to this explosive plan. In this video, we're going to examine whether nuking Mars is the right approach, or whether it's a waste of time and resources. Mars is similar to Earth in a number of ways. It has very similar geographic features, from canyons to mountains to volcanoes, a day lasts roughly 24 hours on both planets, axial tilt is very close, with Mars at 25 degrees and Earth at 23 and a half. Mars has roughly the same dry land area, despite being half the size of Earth. Of course, this is because two-thirds of our planet is covered in water, and Mars is currently bone dry. Even gravitational differences are comparatively minor. Mars exerts about 40% of the gravity we experience here on Earth. The real differences are atmospheric composition, pressure, and temperature. Our atmosphere is mostly nitrogen and oxygen, 77% and 21% respectively, whereas Mars has an atmosphere composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide, a whopping 95%, plus 2.7% nitrogen, about 2% argon, and trace amounts of oxygen, water vapor, and nitric oxide. This thin atmosphere makes it impossible for liquid water to exist on the surface, which in turn makes the existence of complex life unlikely. Atmospheric pressure is also negligible, clocking in at less than 1% of what we experience on Earth at sea level. Finally, the average temperature difference between Earth and Mars is pretty substantial. As of 2017, Earth measured an average of 58.6 degrees Fahrenheit, or 14.8 degrees Celsius, whereas Mars usually runs about negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 61 degrees Celsius. That's technically livable, but not comfortably so. That kind of cold is comparable to inland Antarctica, so, what we're considering for a new home is a barren, waterless, freezing, rocky planet with a razor-thin, unbreathable atmosphere. Not the most ideal starting characteristics. That's where Elon's nukes come in. While it may sound like a joke, nuking the poles of Mars could actually kickstart a global warming process which could lead to a more habitable planet. Here's how it would work in theory. We launch some of our massive stockpile of nuclear weapons at the Martian poles, creating a sustained explosion and what Musk calls mini-suns, which would melt the ice caps and release greenhouse gases which would accumulate in the atmosphere, trapping more heat and igniting a runaway greenhouse effect like we're currently trying to fight here on Earth. In theory, this thicker atmosphere would create a more livable temperature and allow for the existence of liquid water on the surface of Mars. It sounds good on paper, but some studies have suggested that the idea is unrealistic at best. One study found that Elon's plan would only raise the planet's pressure to 7% of what we have on Earth, not nearly enough to create an enticing biome for complex life. If you stepped out of your protective Martian dome into an environment like that, you'd be dead within minutes. If not from your organs rupturing, then from freezing, suffocating, or being blasted by radiation the atmosphere is too thin to block. Another calculation worked out that, in order to create Elon's artificial suns, we'd have to detonate almost 3,500 nukes, 1,728 per pole, every single day for seven weeks, ignoring the fact that we simply don't have the capability to launch that many of anything with our current technology, and the fact that the entire world supply of nukes is under 14,000, of which under 4,000 are active warheads, detonating that many nuclear weapons on a planet the size of Mars would likely turn our new home into a radioactive wasteland for centuries, with no guarantee that the scheme would even work, thereby prohibiting further study of the planet due to contamination. The optimists among us are free to say that, while we may not have the technology to terraform Mars today, we could very well have it in the future. And that may be the case. In the meantime, instead of fixating on bending a barren, frozen ball of rock to our will, why not focus on solving the habitability crisis we're facing here on Earth? It's fascinating and darkly funny that we think we can build a planet from square one, when we can't even take care of the one that we inherited in a perfectly livable state. If we can't solve the climate crisis on Earth and prove that we're the masters of our own planet, then why should we believe that Mars would be any different? By all measurements, it will be substantially more difficult to terraform than Earth would be to fix. We need to invest our resources wisely. Think about it. If we develop climate-altering technology to solve the crisis here on Earth, that technology may pave the way to future solutions for the Martian atmosphere. Think of Earth as a trial run for terraforming Mars. 
Our planet has training wheels. We can step outside without freezing or exploding. We can breathe the air. We have plenty of water to drink. Mars doesn't have any of those things. If we hop on that bicycle before we're ready, we're going to crash. Let's start with the planet with the training wheels. While terraforming Mars or solving the climate crisis here on Earth will be incredibly difficult, it's super easy to protect yourself and your valuable data with Dashlane. Thanks to Dashlane, I can take control of all my online accounts and secure each of them with strong, unique passwords, as well as get breach alerts that tell me when one of my accounts has been compromised. Dashlane is a super secure, locally encrypted password manager for all your most important data. It's a safe place to store important documents and receipts, a VPN to keep your browsing secure from prying eyes, a dark web monitoring watchdog, and of course, a reliable password manager that makes it easy to save all your different passwords, autofill login fields, and automatically change passwords if they're ever compromised. Go to dashlane.com slash second thought to try out these awesome features with a free trial of Dashlane Premium. And if you really want to get serious about online security, use the coupon code second thought to get 10% off your subscription.